In Cuba, the fifth extraordinary session of the ninth legislature of National Assembly concludes with the passing of new bills. In Colombia, Gustavo Petro, candidate of Pacto Historico, reminds in the lead of voting intentions only 13 days prior to the presidential elections. The leaders of the countries of the Collective Security Treaty Organization expressed their readiness to establish cooperation with NATO. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Ana Marrero from the Telesur headquarters in Caracas, Venezuela. We begin with the news. Stay with us. In Cuba, the fifth extraordinary session of the NIDA legislature of the National Assembly concluded with the passing of two bills. During Monday's parliament session, Cuban lawmakers endorsed two bills, one of the rights of authors and performers, and other one for the general protection of cultural heritage and natural heritage site. Cuban President Miguel Diaz-Canel made a final remarks. In his speech, the Cuban president reiterated his support for the families of the victims of the Saratoga Hotel explosion, criticized the hemorrhage ambition of the United States, which he says aims the dividing the world and also denounced the destabilizing plans of the White House against Cuba. Somos un Estado socialista de derecho. We are a socialist state with the right to exist, exactly what our adversaries refuse to accept now. Blinded by frustrations, the empire at its high release are resorting to all practice of attack with modern techniques of conventional warfare. They labor us and resume the infamous path of hatred with constant calls for vandalism and insulting terrorists. In their eagerness to create a climate of social insecurity as a prelude to social unrest and their call for action and over, amplified through vulgar spoken persons in different internet platforms. Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canales denounced that the United States is stabilizing Europe with issue laws of weaponry in order to achieve its ambitions. We are already seeing the consequence of such socialist ambition, especially in Europe. Such ambition is costing Europe human life and suffering, but also damaging the global economy to an extent that is now hard predicted. They are making Europe a prominent destination for all kinds of weaponry, with no real control nor idea about their future use. And it should be noted that at present, the few countries that have nuclear weapons have accumulated enough nuclear arsenal to destroy the planet several times over. And that the possibility of collateral damage is always there. Diaz Canel went on to say that Cuba's foreign policy is based on updating international law and maintaining peace and justice. The global scenario of the 90s, when the United States enjoyed a singular hegemonic supremacy after the collapse of the socialist bloc in Eastern Europe, is not the situation today. And it would be a dangerous mistake to try to reestablish that by force. Aware of this new scenario, we carry on international relations on the basis of principle and in full compliance with the international law, committed to peace, to justice, and the right to full independence, development, and security of all countries, especially third world countries, which are the most vulnerable. The state of emergency to do due to high levels of violence that is still in force in three provinces of Ecuador has left around 1,131 arrested in the first 15 days. The Ecuadorian Interior Minister said that arrests were part of at least 50,000 strategies operations to dismantle criminal guns. The measure came into effect by presidential decree on April 30 in the provinces of Manabí, Esmeralda and Guayas. Mexican authorities found at least 158 people of different nationalities in Sao Paulo, Mexico, after the overcrowded truck where they traveled collided with a motorcycle. 
According to the Secretariat of Security and Civil Protection, the accident occurred at kilometer 13 of Circuito Exterior Mexicanism in the region of Sompayo. Authorities found the asylum seeker after they asked the driver to pull over. Officers hear voices from inside and found 158 people inside. Among them were 81 men, 15 women and 27 minors. Only two people were of Mexican nationality, the rest were from countries such as Guatemala, Cuba, Honduras, Nicaragua and El Salvador. We had an accident in the morning involving the trailer and a motorcycle and we had one fatality. We have already handed over the driver to the public prosecutor's office. We have some people who were undocumented. So far, we are waiting for instructions to see where we will transfer them. They were already checked by medical services. Each one of them was checked. They were evaluated. Unfortunately, they are fine. The Mexican parliament agreed to launch a new plan of action seven years and eight months after the disappearance of 43 students from all male teacher training college in the town of Ayotzinapa in western Guerrero State on September 26, 2014. Families of the disappearing students, supported by social organizations, agreed that a new plan to begin on September 26 so will include mobilizations in different cities and the country capital. Melania Navarrete, one of the relatives of the missing students, presented a report of the case acknowledging a recent manner of the investigation that revealed the involvement of security forces from the military, but demand more commitment with from the government. Therefore, families insisted on demonstrations to demand Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador administration provide a conclusive account of what happened to the students. We'll take a short break now and join us again after this. Welcome back. In Colombia, Gustavo Petro, candidate for Pacto Historico Romance in the lead of voted intentions only 13 days prior to the presidential elections. A new poll revealed in the last few hours shows that less than two weeks to go before the presidential election, Petro leads in voting intentions with at least 36% support followed by right winner Federico Gutierrez and in third and fourth place can the candidates Rodolfo Fernandez and Sergio Fajardo, respectively. The survey was conducted by the Technology and Electoral Services, who informed that the sample size was of 8,000 people with a confidence level of 97% and margin of error of less than 2.7%. Chile Minister of Foreign Affairs Antonia Origola stressed her country called for enabling the participation of Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela in the Ninth Summit of the Americas to be held in the U.S. The Chilean Foreign Minister reiterated that the position of the Revolving Administration and her own on the issue of human rights is known by everybody. The head of the Chilean diplomacy reaffirmed that exclusion has not led to result in recent years and a post-pandemic and economic crisis required dialogues among all countries in the continent. The U.S. Department of State confirmed last week that it had rolled out inviting the three nations to attend the summit, but White House spokesman Ian Psaki said invitations and had not yet been sent because they are not final decision. In Chile, the plenary of Constitutional Convention published the first draft of the country's new constitution. With this step, the elaboration of new Chile Magna Carta of 499 articles enter its final stage. The text will be delivered this Monday to the Conciliation Commission. Furthermore, the Premier Commission and the Commission of Transitory Norms will also work on the document. It is foreseen that the final votes of the new constitutional constitution will be extended until June 9, 2019. The convention concluded the drafting of the new in the card town on Saturday, my pardon, a fact that they describe as a democratic exercise.
In Peru, more than 80% of citizens expressed their disapproval regarding the, ma the management of the Congress. According to studies published by the Ipsos Peru polling company, the rejection of the current parliament increased at 3% in relation to April when it was of 82% of Peruvian disapproving their activities. As for the head of Congress, Maria del Carmen Alba, she resigned a 69% reaction against only 16% of support for her management as president of the legislative body. The survey indicated that the Peruvian Congress is a state institution with the lowest acceptances index, since only 12% of those who are in favor of the parliament. Cuba and Iran strengthened economic relations and cooperation. The event came as part of the decision of the Intergovernmental Commission for Economic Relations that will last until May 17. Within the framework of the meeting, the past corona vaccine production plans was inaugurated. Technology transfer of the supernaut to vaccine from the Fenlai Vaccine Institute and the Pasteur Institute. Cuba's Deputy Prime Minister Ricardo Cabrizas, who shared the Atlantic delegation in the Persian country, pointed out that the exchange with different Iranian organizations and institutions allow evaluating the development of economic, commercial, financial, and cooperation relations between both nations. The Iranian side was represented by the Health Minister Abraham Anulahin and other high level officials. The Malian government has announced its withdrawal from all bodies of the regional anti-terrorist coalition known as the G5 Sahel, including the Joint Force. The delay of the transfer of the retaining presidency to Mali as providing for the agreement is the cause of this decision. Bamako has ratified its withdrawal from the West African Forest in protest against the reaction as head of the regional group, which also includes Mauritania. Chad, Burkina Faso, and Niger. In a communique read by military officer, they state that they strongly repudiate the argument of member states that promotes the situation of an internal, international police to reject the exercise of the presidency of Mali. Upon hearing the news, the Secretary Guterres expressed his deep concern over the deteriorating security situation in the Sahel. Now shifting topics, another some storm that devastated on Monday in Iraq sent at least 2,000 people to hospital with breathing problems and led to closure of airports, schools and public offices across the country. In the 80 dust storm since mid-April to hit a country which has been battered by soil degradation, tense rot and low rain falling to climate change. The last ones early this month led to the death of a person while 5,000 had to be hospitalized from respiratory problems. A Monday, a cloud of dust involved the capital of Baghdad in an orange cloud and blanketed in many other cities, including the Shantin Shar city of Najaf to the south and Soli Matniya in the northern. Kurdish Autonomous Region. Authorities in seven of Iraq's 18 provinces ordered government offices to shut down, but health facilities remain open to assist those most at risk, including the elderly and people suffering from chronic respiratory disease and heart ailments. We have more news coming up after final lecture break, so don't go away. Welcome back. The leader of the countries of the Collective Security Treaty Organization expressed their readiness to establish cooperation with NATO. 
And I join Communique to organize, the organization also expresses satisfaction with the international cooperation and said it plans to set up collaboration with the UN and other international and regional organizations. They also stress the importance of resolving outstanding international issues through political and diplomatic means and cite the operation in Kazakhstan as example. The participating countries also emphasize that the organization continues to improve the structure, expanding foreign policies, coordination and military and economic cooperation. Russia's Deputy Foreign Minister Sergei Rybakov announced that the United States is deliberating the hiding its military and biological activities in Ukraine. During a meeting of the Commission investigating such activities, the Russian diplomat emphasized that during the last 10 years, Washington created biological laboratories of military charges in all regions of the world to take under its control all searches carried out by different countries. Furthermore, he emphasized that Russia's special military operation made it possible to reveal what is being done in Ukraine in a biological military field. Finally, he emphasized that the military threat reduced agencies linked to the Pentagon and plays a role in the financial acquisition and implementation of most biological studies. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has dismissed on Sunday the commander of the territorial defense of the armed forces, Yuri Aluskin. The decision comes aimed at a series of allegations by Ukraine fighters, which have been silenced by the national and Western media. The presidential West Side has only announced the decision and officially appointed Major General Igor Tansura as a replacement. Over the past weeks, several Ukrainian troops have told Russian media or posts on various social networks allegations about lack of supplies to the troops, neglect, poor management, and corruption. The Ukrainian president did not make any reference to the dismissal either when presenting his usual speech on the 81. 81st date of the conflict and only limited himself to mentioning that this week we'll see a great deal of international activity. Ukrainian officials admitted the presence of Israeli mercenaries inside the Soval steel plant in Mariupol. The advisor to the Ukrainian president admitted the presence of about 40 Israeli mercenaries fighting on the Ukrainian front inside the Azovol steel plant, which was high by the Kiev force within the front war of the Russian military operation. The fact confirms the allegations made earlier by the spokeswoman of the Russian foreign ministry, Maria Sengorova, who had warned about the existence of mercenaries fighting alongside a neo-Nazi Azov battalion, while pointing they involvement of the Israeli government. The United Nations Organization warned on Monday that the extension of the conflict in Ukraine will have devastating consequences for the population. Nine out of the ten Ukrainians will live below the Porta line as a result of this. A publication of the multilateral organization has detailed that a present buildings, roads, bridges, numerous hospitals and schools have been completely destroyed. The report adds that half of the companies are closed and other 50% are facing serious difficulties, meaning that millions of Ukrainian citizens will be pushed to live below the poverty line if the conflict continues to drag on. Let's go now to the Donbass, where a total of 14 visited a detention and torture center in the Ukrainian nationalist battalion Aydar in the recent recovered area in the Luhansk People's Republic. Polovikin was a former sausage factory converted into a detention, torture and death camp by the Aydar battalion, one of the neo-Nazi groups incorporated into the Ukrainian armed forces since the 2014 coup in Kiev. The use of torture against people who did not agree with the main ideology, against people they consider prisoners of war, without giving them 
a chance to defend themselves. As international law stipulates about torture, if they believe that if a person had something to do with military service, in one way or another, torture was used and it was severe torture. And as yet undetermined number of people were interned here illegally for political reasons or simple extortion. This is what happened to them. That was in 2014. They were bringing us bodies with signs of violent death, on which we would do forensic analysis in addition to gunshots, wounds. There were cases where we found stabbing, wounds, caused by blunt and also by hard objects. There will emerge perhaps a new structure that to deter such crimes on a global scale. Because we see, or what we see at the moment, is what we could call a crisis of international criminal law. But in any case, these people must be punished. And the idea, which is very important, of a certain moral sense, that they have a legal right to torture their fellow citizens must be condemned. Ivan spent several weeks in these dungeons. This is where they took us inside. There, there was a table, a chair. There was a cover with an axe. And this is where the beatings were done, the interrogations, the torture, and everything else. In this particular place, as you can see, here they also try to cover their tracks. They broke everything. They interrogated people. They made fun of them after the interrogation. They would take people down the same stairs to their cells. Here they watch us and pour water on us. This is where they were watching to see if we were alive or not. They could have thrown anything. Thousands of murder and torture files have been submitted by the Lugansk authorities to the International Criminal Court and the European Court of Human Rights. None have been looked into. Alejandro Kirk, Telesur, Palavikino, Lugansk People's Republic. Well, we have come to the end of this news brief, but you can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. You can also join us on our socials. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram as well. Telesur English, I'm from the South. I'm Ana Marrero, and thank you for watching.